بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم الدين أما بعد الحمد لله brothers and sisters we were discussing the virtues of the Quran and the easy way that we can connect ourselves to the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and I know that for many of us commencing uh, to become a hafiz of the Quran or a qari of the Quran it can be a very daunting even you know concept that how can I actually uh, you know uh, venture or how can I go forward to uh, attempt to become hafiz of the Quran but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out, out of his mercy Allah azza wa has said وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُدَّكِرِ We have made this Quran easy for remembrance is there anyone there now to remember it? And we have seen, subhanAllah, converts to Islam. The miracle of the Quran is in this. And I had mentioned this, and a, a Hindu convert to Islam actually reached out to me. And he told me, Shaykh, he said, I was able to learn the alphabet, the Arabic alphabet, in one month. This is a person whose generation after generations of forefathers was Hindu. He said, in one month, I mean, you know, Hindu, they don't, they don't, I know the Arabic uh, script, right? They have a completely different language. They have a completely different alphabet. They have a completely different religion. But when he converted to Islam, he told me this. He said, Shaykh, it took me one month to learn the Arabic alphabet. And Alhamdulillah, now, you know, many, many siparas and many, many surahs of the Quran, he recites by Allah's Fadl and Karam. So this is the miracle of the Quran, right? We should not allow shaitan to make us, you know, become, you know, scared or to be fearful, to attempt, like exactly what the Prophet ﷺ was commanded by Allah, that when Jibreel ﷺ would come and recite, the Prophet ﷺ would quickly, quickly try to catch what Jibreel ﷺ is saying so they wouldn't forget it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these verses to him, لا تحرك لسانك لتعجل به إن علينا جمعه وقرآنه فإذا قرأناه فاتبع قرآنه That, O oh Muhammad ﷺ, don't hasten to say and catch everything that Jibreel is saying. He says, let him finish his recitation. And then when he finishes, you just say to the best of your ability what he said, and we will fortify it in your heart. And this is the beauty of the Quran. Quran, the secret to Quran, if I were to t tell everybody, what is the secret to memorization of the Quran? Is repetition. Repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Just keep repeating. A hundred times. You know, you have the tasbih. On that tasbih, do it like a counter. Either a tasbih or, you know, those counters, those clickers. A hundred times. He says that after the hundredth time, you're, it'll, be, it'll be set. Or whatever is easy for you, right? It doesn't have to be a hundred times. But the, 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 the reality of Quran is nothing else but repetition. Even if you are the most, you know, weak-minded there is no such thing, brothers and sisters, as a strong mem memory or a weak memory. There's no such thing as a strong memory or weak memory. There's a trained memory and an untrained memory. That's all that is. People be afraid. But what have you tried? Have you trained your memory? There's no such thing as this person has a strong memory, this person has a weak memory. No, there's a trained memory and an untrained memory. And that trained memory comes from what? From constant repetition. And after that thing which is repeated, then repeating the repetition. Repeating all, all the, the, the ones who are hafad here, they can, you know, uh, you know, correlate with what I'm saying, is that everything has to do with right, repeating what we have uh, uh, memorized. And, mem and repeating what we've memorized and memorizing what we've repeated constantly like this. With that being said, today, yesterday we spoke about that ayah or those two ayat that Allah Ta'ala gave as a gift min kanzin taht al arsh that it is a salat and it is a dua and it is a hifz min a shaitan. It is a salat, it is a dua and it is a hifz from shaitan. It is a protection. And that is the last two ayat of Surah Baqarah, Aman al Rasul. Uh, interesting thing, after I gave this talk last night, one brother came up to me, may Allah Ta'ala reward him, and he shared his thought with me. He said, Shaykh, I didn't know. I've been reading this the whole time. And also I read along with it the ayat before, Lillahi ma fil samawati wa ma fil ard. 
He says, I've been doing this all these years. He said, but I did not know that it has all of these benefits and all of these blessings in it. So I said, MashaAllah, Jazakallah khair for sharing that. Now you know. And brothers and sisters, the important thing about knowing is that you will be reading something, but if you do not read it for that particular intention, you will not get that specific effect or reward. Listen to what I'm saying. When a person recites the Qur'an, inshallah, you will get the reward. But to know that this is hirz min ash shaytan, this is a protection from the devil, this is a you know, uh, specific shifa from sicknesses. This is a specific, for example, uh, thing that wards away evils. It wards away harms. It protects you from all difficulties. This you have to make intention. And this is why knowledge is connected to intention. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Verily, your deeds are based upon your intention. And where does the intention come from? Where does the intention come from? From your knowledge. So if you don't have knowledge of what you are doing, you will not get that specific effect. The reward you will get, without a doubt. Inshallah, the reward you will get, there's no doubt about that. Allah will give you the reward for reciting the Qur'an, even if you don't know for what intention you're reading, even if you don't know what you're reading, inshallah, thawab you will get. But we should not just suffice on thawab. There are so many things. And that is the only way we can maximize our intention in the Qur'an that we are reading is through the ilm of the fada'il of that surah. Through the knowledge of the effect that that surah or that ayah has. And that is when it will become more effective. That is when it will become more effective. That's why Allah Ta'ala says in the Qur'an, هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ هَلْ يَسْتَوِي الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Can you equate the person who knows and the one who does not know? Because the one who knows, he knows all of the effects of it. He knows all the virtues of it. He knows all what it has come for. Now when he is going to be reading it, he's going to be reading it with a more powerful intention. He's going to be reading it with a more effective, right, uh, attention, an effective focus. And with that effective attention and focus, right, there will be more power and more effect in what we recite. That is why, brothers and sisters, everybody's dua, everybody can make dua, isn't it? But why is it that we go to dua to get dua from specific people? Why do we go to get dua from mashayikh or from ulama or from pious people, right? Getting dua from the salihin, this is something. Why do we go to them? Because their yaqeen, their connection with Allah, their knowledge and the effect in their dua is more powerful. And where does this come from? The source of this is ilm. And that ilm then affects our intention and the intention then affects our action. So with that being said, here the Prophet ﷺ said to one of the companions, he said, should I not tell you which is the greatest ayah of the Qur'an? Can you tell me which is the greatest ayah of the Qur'an? So that Sahabi said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, is it Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum? Is it ayatul kursi? The greatest, a'adhamu ayatin fil Qur'an. The most superior ayah in the Qur'an. Which one is it? He said, is it not Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum? So the Prophet ﷺ told him, لِيَهْنِكَ الْعِلْمُ يَا أَبَ الْمُنْذِرِ He says, may your knowledge be blessed for you. May your knowledge be blessed for you. This is that. Brothers and sisters, if we are not able to become hafiz of the Qur'an, at least be hafiz of the most superior ayah of the Qur'an, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. Ayatul Kursi. And the beauty of Ayatul Kursi is, it's amazing. I want to first mention that First and foremost, it has all of the sifat and the qualities and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is this the most superior? Because it is describing our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most beautiful manner. If you read the meaning of the ayatul kursi, it is a complete description of our beloved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this, it is the most superior. Another thing to take into consideration, the very famous story about ayatul kursi is that this is one of the most powerful protections of all. It says that one day the Prophet ﷺ told Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu that, Oh Abu Huraira, these are some of the dates. They are dedicated for some specific poor people. You watch over this and don't give it to anyone unless I tell you. So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu was watching over those dates and this hadith is narrated in Bukhari. 
He was watching over those days. When a man passed by, he said, I am a very miskeen person. I am a traveler. I came from far away. I have children. Can you just please give me some of this? He says, I'm sorry. The Prophet ﷺ said that this is for specific individuals. We have allocated this for them, for the sadaqat. I can't just give this to anybody. He said, please, I'm miskeen. I'm also mustahiq of this. I'm poor too. Why are you giving it? Give it to me. I'm miskeen. I'm poor. I'm a traveler. I'm old. You know, please give me this. He said, when he started crying, I just felt sorry for him, so I gave him. I said, okay, take some. So I gave him a handful. I went and told the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, he said that he lied and he's going to come back tomorrow. And he says, first and foremost, I said, he, he said he lied. And then the second thing is, he's going to come back tomorrow. He knew already that he's going to come back tomorrow. So I said, you know, okay. I waited and again, this same person came for the second time. And he said, please, you know, give me some of this. I'm a traveler. I'm poor. I have kids. He said, Look, I already told you. You came again. I already told you this is not for you. This is allocated from some specific people who are this for sadaqah. And then he started crying. And he said, he started crying. I felt sorry for him. And he said, I gave him. Again, I went to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, this person, he was just overwhelmed. You know, he started crying. I got emotional. I gave it to him. He said, he lied and he's going to come again. So the third time I said, this time the, 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 the Prophet wasalam, said, I'm not going to let him go this time. So the third time he came, he started telling me the same story again. He started sobbing and crying. And he said, this time I grabbed him. I said, I'm not going to let you go. I'm going to take you straight to the Prophet wasalam. He told me that you're going to lie. So he said, no, 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 don't take me. Whatever you do, don't take me to the Prophet. Whatever you do, don't take me to the Prophet Wasallam. He said, he said, no, I'm going to take you. He said, I will teach you something. I'm going to give you something, something very special. I'll give you some knowledge that nobody knows that knowledge. Abu Huraira, you know, three years of his life, Abu, everybody who knows Abu Huraira, he used to faint out of hunger. At the member of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, only because he was seeking hadith and knowledge, and he did not do any other job, and he was just there. See, so a person who's so thirsty for knowledge that he's willing to go hungry for knowledge, when somebody tells him, "I have knowledge for you," then it's going to get his attention. He said, "Okay, tell me." He said, "Before you go to sleep, do not go to sleep until you recite ayatul kursi, Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum." And if you do that, Allah will appoint an angel to watch over you the entire night till the morning. So he let him go. When he came back to the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ya Rasulullah, this is what happened. And this person told me like this, is this true? So the Prophet ﷺ said, Sadaqaka wa huwa kathub. He's told you the truth and he is the biggest liar. He told you the truth. He, you know, you have the wiki leaks. You know, you have the leaks. He leaked it out. He leaked out what will protect you from shaitan. He leaked it out. He had to give istikhbarat, make of khabarara. So he gave some of the information because he's under, you know, he's under interrogation. He's going to be taken to the, you know, to Rasulullah. So he gave out that information to save his own life. Because he knows if he would have been taken to the Prophet, he would have been in big trouble. So he said, do you know who you were talking to these past three days? He said, no. He said, that was shaitan. He said, you were speaking to shaitan for these three days. And he saved his own life by telling you the information of that which will protect you from him. Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. The most powerful protection from the devil. There's a very interesting story that I wanted to say. There was a sister. And this was in New York. She's a sister in hijab. And she said that, you know, I would work at the hospital, late nights I would go, and sometimes, you know, it would get very, very late. So one day, 2 a.m. in the morning, in the, you know, coming out of the hospital, I had parked my car a little bit far, and it was 2 a.m. And she said, I was walking, and I heard footsteps from behind me. This story was told directly from her to us, saying that the effect. So this is not just when we talk about shaitan, we're thinking about something like, you know, with... A red guy with a tail and two horns. Right? That's not necessarily the devil because they're shayateen al jinni wal ins. They're shayateen that are unseen and they are shayateen that are in the form of human beings. That their desire is to harm people, 
They have no other intent. They have no other wish for people other than to harm people. So she said, I was going to my car and I heard walking and I kept walking faster and this person kept coming and coming and coming. And he said, I, I didn't know what else to do and my car was a little bit far. I started walking as, I was almost like run walking, you know? She said, I started reading Ayatul Kursi. I started reading Ayatul Kursi because I didn't know what else to do. He said, as soon as I started reading Ayatul Kursi, I heard the footsteps stop right in their tracks. He said, as I was going, I looked back and he said, he was still standing there looking in my direction. And then he said, just standing there like, he, like there was something holding him back. He said, I sat in my car and I left. That was the time when I realized the miracle of Ayatul Kursi. Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. Shayateen al ins. Who, you know, who knows like what could have happened if a person does not seek protection from Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is a, one of the most powerful ayat in protecting ourselves and also reading it upon our children. Sometimes the children have nightmare or sometimes you can't sleep or you have nightmare. Always read ayatul kursi. This is an amazing protection. Another hadith that the Prophet said is an authentic hadith. The Prophet والسلام, said that whoever reads ayatul kursi after every salat the one who recites ayatul kursi after every salat, then what? The only thing that is between him and entering paradise is death. The only thing between you and paradise is death. What does that mean? In other words, the Prophet here is making like the making the uh, uh, the death to be like a a, a veil. That as soon as you lift this veil of death, you are already there and you've entered into paradise. Meaning nothing will be holding you back from entering into paradise except death. Meaning you will definitely enter into paradise. If you make this amal and this habit of reciting ayatul kursi after every salat, it'll take you two minutes. It's a one ayah, ayatul kursi. Every Muslim should know this and recite this before you go to sleep and after every prayer, such a reward Allah Ta'ala will give you that you will be a person who will be worthy of entering into paradise. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq to memorize these great, great surahs. So, so far, what have we learned? The last two ayats of Aman al-Rasul. Aman al-Rasul bima unzil. Last two ayat of Surah Baqarah. And Ayatul Kursi, which is ayat number 255 of Surah Baqarah. If we just start with these small, small ayat, inshallah to the barakah of this, Allah will give us the tawfiq and the himma and the determination to memorize more of the major surahs of the Quran. May Allah give us tawfiq to implement what has been said.